All right, guys, as promised, tonight's review is on the VXR 31.5 by Matthews. There's been a lot of hype around this bow, and I think it's well-deserved. Uh, going to be going over the technical specs, speeds through the chronograph, as well as the differences from last year's model to this year's model and how that might benefit you if you're looking for a new bow. So stick tight, all that good stuff coming at you. Oh yeah. All right guys, so like I was saying, tonight we're, we are reviewing the VXR 31.5. Uh, there's been a lot of hype around this bow, and I think, like I said, it's, it's very deserved. Um, there's a theme this year where everybody's complaining that the, the big three, you know, PSE, Matthews, and Hoyt, haven't, they haven't changed anything on their bow. And while at first glance, it might not seem that way, they've actually done quite a few things to this bow to make it more stable, more forgiving, and ultimately just a better shooting bow. They're just improving upon the platform that was already successful. So getting into the technical specs, uh, this bow IBO is at 343 feet a second, so two feet a second faster than last year, pretty much staying on par with that. It has a six inch brace height, which, you know, the last, gosh, three or four models they've had have all had a six inch brace height. It's a good combination of speed and forgiveness. Um, as the name would suggest, it's 31 and a half inches axle to axle. So they, they lengthened it an inch and a half from the Vertex, uh, which I'll get into that in a minute, um, how that benefits you. Uh, it still has the, the same cams as the Vertex. So this is the, like the cross centric, but the switch mod cam. So, you know, without having to, to back my limbs out, I can change between a 60, 65, 70 and 75 pound peak weight on this. Um, that's important because your limbs are most efficient when they're bottomed out. When they build these bows, they build them into spec so that when the limb is all the way bottomed out, that's when the deflection is on point. That's when the brace height is exactly where it should be. That's where the limbs are most efficient. So be able to, being able to change my peak weight without moving my limb pockets at all is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, if I'm shooting like an indoor 3D league or, or something where I don't need to pull 70 or 75 pounds, I can just throw the 60, 60 pound mods on here, leave the limbs where they're at, and you know if I need to, I can even back it down from there. Um, so for you guys who might have like a low poundage thing, maybe you got a shoulder injury, you can put the 60 pound limbs on this, give it three turns from, uh, from maxed out, and you're at like 45 pounds. Uh, these limbs go up and down really quick, so one full turn off top and bottom is five pounds. So you can really change the poundage without backing your limb out a ton, which is, which is nice, because then you're not affecting the specs of the bow as much. Um, so back to the cross-centric cam system. Um, what's really cool about these is, like all the Matthews in the last few years, you know, it still has the top hat system here. So rather than moving my rest right or left or putting twists in a yoke to lean my cam one way or the other, you can just swap those top hats and you're literally shifting the entire harness one way or the other. So if I'm ripping tail right, I'm gonna put the big spacer on the left, push that cam towards the tear and it's gonna alleviate that tear. What that means is I can leave my rest in center shot. I'm not gonna have any cam lean, which prevents wear on your strings, you know, right where the cam rolls over and get a perfect tune without ever having to move my rest out of center shot. So that's a really cool feature. Um, they come stock with 85% mods, 85% let off mods. You can order them with 80. So those of you who like a little lower let off, you can order this one with an 80% mod and, uh, and get that holding weight that you might be trying to achieve. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I know you're thinking, well, it looks just like the Vertex. Uh, what they've done with this riser is they've completely redesigned the, the cutouts in it and even though it doesn't weigh less, the way that the weight is distributed has, has changed. So the biggest change they made is in, in the sight window here. So from here down to the shelf, they've completely caged this whole riser. What that does is it alleviates that top heavy feel that a lot of people have complained about with a Matthews. Um, you know, because the grip is, is below the, the true center of the riser. They have the arrow pull through the true center of the string and the center of the riser. So the grip is actually, you know, probably an inch, inch and a half lower than the true center. 
In the past, people have complained that that, that creates a top-heavy feel because there's just more material on top of your grip than below your grip. So by cutting out the, the riser window here, what they've done is they've, they've moved that material basically lower into the riser. So there's more material below the grip now and they've cut out the material above the grip. So while it weighs the same, they've moved where that weight is. By taking this material out, it alleviates a lot of that top heavy feel, especially when you get a quiver full of arrows on there. Um, personally, I think, like I said, it's a subtle difference, but it's one of those differences that, that completely changes the way that bow aims and feels. Um, you might have seen on their website that they're saying it's the longest riser that they've ever built on a hunting platform. And what's crazy is, so I shoot a Matthews Traverse and I love that bow. I'm, it's one of my favorite bows of all time. I was really shocked when I held them up side by side. So there, the bottom of the risers are even right there. Well, keep them even. Now look at the top. So the bottom is even and the, the riser on, on this uh, 31.5 is actually longer than it is on the Traverse by almost a full inch. Even though it's an inch and a half shorter axle to axle, the riser is an inch longer. With target bows, uh, people always say, you know, longer axle to axle bows hold more steady. And that's true because usually when you get a longer axle to axle, the riser that the limbs are on is longer. That's where a lot of the length comes from. So you're not so much getting a stable aim out of the, the axle to axle length as you are the riser length. So by lengthening this riser the way they did, even though it's only 31 and a half inches, I'm getting a bow that feels like it's more 33, 34, 35 inches. In fact, this is this riser is just as long as my Halon X, which is a 35 inch axle to axle bow. So what that does for you is it creates a very stable aiming platform. I mean, literally this bow holds just as well as my Traverse, but I'm an inch and a half shorter axle to axle. So you're getting a better hold while maintaining mobility and a compact platform that if I'm in a tree stand or in a ground blind, or spot and stock through the brush, there's just less bow to worry about. You know, if I have a really steep angled shot downhill, I'm not gonna worry about, you know, getting into my, hitting my thigh and having to contort my body to not do that. It's still extremely maneuverable while maintaining an extremely, extremely solid aiming platform. So, like I said, it's, it, upon first glance, it doesn't look like they did a lot, but when you really start getting into the nuances of everything they've done here, it's, it's, pretty awesome. Um, I'm, you know, I've shot this bow a little bit, even right-handed. So I'm left-handed, even though this bow is right-handed, um, I, I can still hold the pin in the middle, which I can't say for a lot of other bows. Uh, it's very well balanced. It, it's got a great back wall. Um, the, the draw cycle seems to be a little bit smoother than the verdicts. And I think that's just because it's a little bit longer. Generally, the longer you go axle to axle, the smoother that draw cycle gets. Uh, now again, that's a personal preference. I don't like doing these reviews based on, on personal biases or personal preferences, but having shot the verdicts a lot and shooting this, I feel like the draw cycle is a little bit smoother. So aside from you know the riser being completely redesigned, um, they, they still have the integrated rest mount here. So as far as I know, there's only one or two rests on the market that can actually adapt to this. Um, and they're both cable driven. Now, personally, I like to stay away from cable driven uh, drop away rests. I like limb driven. Uh, I, if you mount a rest properly, you know, if, the, if you wax the threads that go in here and you cinch that thing down and set the set screw, I've never had an issue with one moving. Now, maybe there's some people out there that just throw their bow around all over the place and the integrated rest mount might hold their rest a little steadier. I, I don't know. Um, but you have the option to, to include the integrated rest with, with this riser. Um, still has the same grip as last year. Um, you can, so a lot of people don't know this, you can order these with side plates. And so then it's just the flat back of the aluminum riser with these real skinny side plates. Personally, I got that on my target bow that I just ordered. I ordered the TRX 36. I, I like the feel of that grip a little bit better. Um, it's thinner, it's flatter. It just feels good in my hand. That being said, this is the best grip Matthews has ever come out with in terms of the, the synthetic grips that come on the bow. Um, it's still got 
you know, a deep throat right here. So my hand isn't gonna push up past a certain point. Whereas like on the halons and the triaxes, that throat was really, really shallow. So if your hand was wet or sweaty, you know, as that, if you were pushing into that shot, sometimes your hand would slip up a little bit more and then you get more heel pressure into the bow and it, you know, just wasn't that great. Um, but like I said, the, the, the upgrades are, are subtle, but, but necessary. Um, it also comes with this SCS system, which it's a, it's a aftermarket thing that you can buy, um, or not aftermarket, you can order it with it if you want, but basically it allows you to attach like a, a lanyard system or a sling to this. So if you're pulling it up in a tree, you know, it's gonna hang your bow just perfectly vertical so you're not clanking into things. You can put a sling on there, throw it over your pack or your back and uh, carry it around. Now, I don't hunt out of a stand a lot, so that doesn't really benefit me, but for you guys back east hunting whitetail, that might be something you wanna look at. So those are all the upgrades. Those are the technical specs. Um, I'm gonna get the chronograph set up. We're gonna test this at 30 inches, 70 pounds, and then 28 inches at 70 pounds, with arrows going from like 509 down to 376 as usual. Uh, so it should give you guys a good idea of, of the full spectrum. Now, I've had a lot of guys saying, oh, test it at 75 pounds. With five extra pounds, add like six feet a second to every number, six to eight feet a second to every number, and you'll know what you're at at 75 pounds. Um, obviously, with more weight, it's gonna shoot more speed, so you're not losing anything by shooting more weight. Should be pretty easy to just tack that on. Um, in the interest of time, I, you know, I can't test every draw length and every draw weight. People just get bored, I'd get bored. Nobody wants to be bored. So anyway, I'm gonna go set up the chronograph and we'll see what this thing can do. All right, so I got the chronograph set up here. Again, this is the VXR 31 and a half. This is right at 70 pounds. Made sure it was right at 70. This is 30 inches. These are the 85% mods. Uh, the first arrow is going to be 509 grains. Two seventy nine, <laughs> so almost two eighty with a five hundred nine grain arrow. That's that's nice. Uh, this is going to be a four hundred seventy five grain arrow. Nice two eighty nine. This next one is a 442 grain arrow, so really common hunting weight. Stacks a little bit right before it breaks over, but it's pretty common with shorter axle to axle bows. 295, so at 30 inches with a 442 grain arrow, which is like very common hunting weight, you're, you're pushing 300, 295, so that's that's gonna smash. Uh, this next arrow is gonna be a 420 grain arrow. Uh, so one thing I wanna wanna preface here is a lot of these like flagship hunting bows are gonna be right around that like 335 to 345 IBO. So most of these speeds of all the bows I've been testing have been fairly similar. Um, where you really see the difference is with heavy arrows. Some cams are more efficient than others. Um, I think. This and the PSE have been two of the more efficient ones that I've tested so far. So again, 420 grains. Three oh five. <laughs> That's smoking. That's another very common hunting weight. That was just an Axis 340 cut at like 28 and a half inches. Super common arrow. Uh, this is a 376 grain arrow. So only. 26 grains over what, what the IBO rating is at. Three twenty four. So that's that's cooking. Um, obviously, I'm impressed with those speeds. It's hard to tell on camera, but this bow is just stupid quiet. Like, I didn't think they could make a quieter bow than the Verdix, and this bow is actually quieter. Uh, has about the same amount of hand shock, which is basically nothing. <laughs> um, 
but very, very impressed. Has a super solid back wall. Bow just feels really good. So I'm gonna go set this to 28 inches and we're gonna run the same arrows through the chronograph and see what it gives us. All right, got the 28 inch mods thrown on here. Uh, one thing I wanna mention, I think I forgot in the review part is uh, this bow will go to 31 inches. So it's 26 and a half to 31. Um, you know, we get a lot of guys, a long draw length is a, it's a blessing and a curse all at the same time. Yes, you're gonna get great speeds, but it really limits your selection in bows once you get over that 30 inch mark. Uh, this bow will go out to 31 inches, which is awesome. Um, it'll go down to 26 and a half, out to 31. So you got a pretty broad spectrum there. Um, if you're shorter than 26 and a half, you have the 28 inch option of this, which I'll be reviewing pretty soon. Uh, so it's 28 axle to axle instead of 31 and a half. Uh, and that'll go down to, I think, 20, 25 and a half. So, pretty broad spectrum there. For a few long draw guys who like a shorter axle to axle, you know, this, this gives you a good option. So again, this is 28 inches, 70 pounds. First arrow is 509 grains. Two sixty-five. Next arrow is four hundred and seventy-five grains. Two seventy-five. This one is four hundred and forty-two grains. Veins falling off. So maybe 437 grains. <sighs> 287, so at 28 inches with a 440 grain arrow, you're getting almost 290. Like that's a very common hunting weight and draw length. That's some serious speed. So it's a, it's a very efficient cam system. And again, I mean, this thing is just stupid quiet. All right, this is a 400 and, uh, 420 grain arrow. Oh, right-handed. 294. And this is a 376 grain arrow. Real light guy. Three hundred two. So, again, obviously you're going to drop speed uh, with a at from twenty eight to thirty. Um, but those are some pretty pretty good speeds. Uh, I don't think anybody anybody would be disappointed with that. Now, personally, I hate the IBO rating because it's with a three hundred and fifty grain arrow at seventy pounds, thirty inch draw. It's gonna be hard to find an arrow 350 grains is actually gonna spine out and shoot right. On top of that, that's without a peep sight, it's without a string loop. Like it's literally just, they put an arrow on a string and they fire it out of a machine. So it's a very skewed number. Uh, anytime you add weight to a string like that, it's gonna slow things down a little bit. But I mean, this bow, it, it's a performer for sure. Um, like I said, extremely quiet, extremely, extremely smooth. I try to keep personal opinion out of this, uh, but I, nobody's gonna shoot this and go, ooh, that hand shock, <laughs> it's getting to me. Like, that, that's not gonna happen. This bow is crazy smooth. Um, obviously, it's accurate. Matthews has always been accurate. You know, one thing that I like about Matthews is if you get the cam timing perfect and you run your knock right through the center of the burger hole, which is the, the hole that the, the uh, screw for the rest mounts through, and you run your rest even, your vertical tear, unless you're way under or over spine, is gonna be perfect every time. And then it's just a matter of swapping the top hats to get your horizontal tear in. Um, little to no knock travel with these bows. Um, it's just an, it's an easy to shoot bow. Even at a six inch brace height, it's forgiving. Um, just, I'm really impressed by this bow. I know I say that with a lot of the bows we carry, but it's because we don't carry crappy bows. Um, so if you get a chance, get down to your, your local dealer, shoot one of these. I guarantee you're gonna like it. Um, the other models are still in the lineup. So the Verdicts is still in the 2020 lineup. 
the, the Traverse is still in the 2020 lineup. Those are great options as well. This just gives you a slightly improved upon platform from last year's model, which is really what the industry does. Um, you know, obviously I understand people don't want to spend, you know, a thousand or 1200 or in the case of the carbon bows, you know, 1600 or 1800 a year. Uh, but it kind of, kind of gripes me when people complain that they didn't do anything because, or that, Oh, you're going to pay $2,000 for the same boat. And it's like, well, every industry is going to keep going. No, if you just do the same thing for four years in a row, how is that better than making a small change every year? It's not any better. Every industry is going to drive forward and with innovation comes a price point. It's just the way it is. Trucks are that way. Cell phones are that way. I mean, how many people do you know that go out and buy an iPhone 11 when they have an iPhone 10 and the only difference is it has one extra camera on it. Like it, it's just the nature of, of any industry that it may not be light years ahead every single year, but it's going to improve upon what it had before. So, you know, save save the comments of of how disappointed you are that they didn't do anything because they actually did do something if you know what you're looking for um i don't mean to sound like a jerk when i'm saying that it's just you know people always say oh stupid for spending 1500 bucks on that and it's like well maybe if you bought the this the bow the year before yeah you don't need to buy this year's model but if you want to trade in the bow from the year before you're going to get seven eight hundred bucks for that and then you're into the new one for only three or four hundred bucks um, or if you haven't bought a bow in 10 years, this is a great option. This is the, the hottest of the hot, the newest of the new. Um, so yeah, it's a good investment and not an investment in the sense that it's going to give you money back, but all these bows have lifetime warranties and Matthews, especially they manufacture parts for every bow that they've ever built going back to the MQ one in like 1992. So if I have an MQ1 and I blow up a limb or need a cam, I can get a part for that. So you literally buy one bow and if you're resistant to change, you can shoot that bow for the rest of your life. So it is a good investment in the sense that you will always be able to shoot the bow that you buy. If you don't want to upgrade, you don't have to. Nobody's twisting your arm to upgrade. But if you do want to upgrade, every year there are slight changes to the bow that make it just that much better than the year before. So that's my two cents on it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to hit that comment section below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, it really helps us out. And until next time, keep them in the middle. I'll see you on the range.